Well, Richard Alley discovered something 10 years ago that made him worry the Earth's climate could suddenly shift, and it changed his life. It was a two-mile-long ice core pulled up from the center of Greenland. It contained bubbles of air that revealed what the Earth's atmosphere was like over a period of 100,000 years. Now, the ice core showed that at one point in as little as 10 years, the global climate had drastically changed. Soon after that discovery, climate change became a personal crusade for Alley. Now, the chair of the National Research Council's study on abrupt climate change, Ali also serves as the Evan Pugh Professor of Geosciences at Penn State University, where he joins me now. So, Dr. Ali, we first met in Munich, as viewers may have seen earlier in our show. And as you were speaking to that group of European scientists, what I was struck with was the practicality of your talk. Now, when it comes to climate change, give us some perspective on what is going on right now in our world. Um, what we're seeing is that climate is changing. I'm a historian of climate. I've looked at, at what's happened in, in the past from the ice cores and other things, and we always see that climate changes. But we're learning enough to say with considerable confidence that a lot of what's going on now is a result of what we humans are doing. There's an immense amount of science behind that very simple statement that we have high confidence that humans are playing the game now, but, but I think we're getting there. So is it fair to say that while global warming does occur naturally, is man making it worse? We are putting a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. If you go and fill up your car at the gas station, you put 100 pounds of gas in. And when you burn that, you add some oxygen and it turns into CO2 and it's sort of 300 pounds of CO2 and you do that every week and it's going up there. And if we could see it, we would realize that we really are changing the atmosphere. We are really good, oil companies are really good at finding oil and getting us something we can use, we use it. Um, we don't see where it goes. If, if the CO2 came out of our tailpipe the way it did in our great-grandfather's generation, um, the way it came out of the horses, rather than blowing away, if you were putting out that 300 pounds of CO2 as horse ploppies, um, it's a pound a mile from your car. You're driving down the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'd cover every road in America an inch deep every year. And so, so it's very clear we're doing this. We're changing the atmosphere, and we're changing the atmosphere in a way that is expected to cause warming. Warming is happening. So if we're putting all this CO2 into our atmosphere, what could that do to our weather? Basically, what it's doing is it's raising the, the average temperature of the planet. It's trapping a little bit of the heat that would otherwise more easily go back to space, and so it makes the, the planet a little warmer. That, in turn, will do several things. It changes sort of the size of the tropical circulation. So, you know, there's this pattern of rain at the equator and dry next to it, and that will get a little bigger, so it, it probably. So that makes a little drying in some places. We are um, uh, going to be melting back some of the ice and snow. Um, if it gets too warm, ice melts. And um, because ice is very reflective, um, where there's snow and ice, it tends to stay cold because the sun bounces back to space the way it does off my bald spot there. Um, if you, you make that dark, you cover it up, uh, you soak up more sun and that warms it some more. So you'll start seeing the, the rise in temperature causing other changes. Some of those changes are fairly easy to predict, others are very difficult to predict. Now, Richard, I've read that the U.S. is responsible for about 25 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions. Is it fair to say that whatever the U.S. and Europe does do to mitigate consumption, is it likely to be negated by increased consumption of energy in countries such as China, India, and, say, Brazil? Yeah, well, it, you know, it's clear that we enjoy what we get from using that energy. We have air conditioners and heaters and ambulances to take us to the hospital if we get sick. We like this. Um, and so we're using a lot of energy because it does good things for us. It's very clear that a lot of people elsewhere in the world also would like those good things, and they are highly likely to use energy to get there. So ultimately, if you talk about the global atmosphere, you're going to be talking about a global issue. Now, you mentioned the polar ice melt. If we see the polar ice begin to melt, what will that mean for ocean levels and, say, the seaside towns that the oceans are at? 
Yeah, sea level has been rising about that much a decade for the last century, and it's fairly clearly a response to warming. Some of that warming natural, some probably human. Um, and it comes from melting of mountain glaciers. Um, they, we can see in the Alps, we can see in the Rockies, the glaciers are getting smaller. It also comes from the ocean itself expanding as it gets warmer. The warmer water takes up more space. Um, there's a little bit, looks like it's coming from the polar ice sheets now. If you look into the future, if you melted all the mountain glaciers, you only get about that much more vertically in the ocean. And as you warm it up, you can get a little more. If you were to melt, say, Greenland, you get about 23 feet vertically. Uh, if you go to Antarctica, you can come close to 10 times more than that. So in terms of looking at what could sea level do, the big gorillas are the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. Um, we had hoped that as warming happened, that they'd get enough more snowfall on top that they would actually grow a little bit. The data that are just coming out, the brand new data the last few years, the data that are coming out seem to point to those ice sheets now shrinking in response to the warming. The snowfall is not materializing, they're melting on the edge, the ice is spreading and flowing faster. And so it looks like they're putting water in the oceans. So far, it's not much. But if warming makes ice shrink, which seems reasonable, and if we have a lot more warming, there's an immense amount of ice in those ice sheets. We don't believe that it can do anything really, really dramatic over, over decades, but you can imagine, you know, 20 feet of water in the ocean or more over centuries. That's not a prediction. We're not sure. This is a hard one. But certainly warmer tends to melt ice. We see warming melting ice, and we think we're headed for more warming if, if we don't change what we're doing.